Lugia V-Star has dominated the standard format of the Pokemon trading card game for months. The question is, should it have been banned? Normally I wouldn't cover a standard format card in this capacity, but it is abundantly clear that Lugia V-Star will not be banned from the standard format anytime soon. Today, I'll make the case for banning it, and also explain why TPCI hasn't taken action on this card. The final main set of the Sword and Shield block, Silver Tempest, released on November 11th, 2022. Following this would be a collector's focused set, Crown Zenith, released in January, although Crown Zenith would introduce a few new cards as well. On November 16th, former world champion Robin Schultz published his top 10 cards from Silver Tempest in an article style post on his website, LimitlessTCG.com. Schultz ranked Lugia V-Star as the number one card from the set, stating, The power level of this deck is the highest of any in the Sword and Shield era and Lugia should comfortably take the spot as the best deck. The Latin America International Championships took place the following week, and was the first event Silver Tempest was legal for. Lugia V-Star was piloted to Day 2 by 55 players, taking up 53% of the Day 2 field. 12 out of the top 16 played Lugia decks, with the finals being Lugia vs Lugia. Renowned player and deck builder Tord Reklev won his fourth international championship title that weekend. In the months since then, the Lugia V-Star archetype has earned Masters Division players over $160,000 in prize money as of March 12th, 2023, and there are still more events to go in this format. Now, in the Pokemon TCG Standard Format, rotation is a process that occurs every year, in which some cards are removed from tournament legal play, while others remain. The rotation process typically takes place in late August or early September of each year, and it's designed to keep the game fresh and balanced by removing overpowered cards and introducing new ones. However, rotation was delayed for the 2023 season, and will officially take place on April 14th, 2023. Because of this delayed rotation, roughly four sets worth of cards have existed in the standard format a little longer than we might have expected. Within these soon-to-be-rotated cards are a handful of special energies including Aurora Energy, Capture Energy, and Powerful Colorless Energy. Wouldn't you know it, these are incredibly important cards in the Lugia V-Star deck. Lugia V-Star Summoning Star V-Star Power Ability allows you to put two non-rulebox colorless Pokemon from your discard pile into play. And it might as well say two Archeops instead, because that's always what you're going to choose. Archeops has the ability Primal Turbo, which allows you to search your deck for up to two special energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon. But note that you will be doing this twice each turn if you have two Archeops in play. So yeah, four special energies out of the deck and onto your Pokemon. Lugia V-Star isn't the greatest attacker itself, so this deck plays fantastic attackers like Stoutland V, Amazing Rare Evil Tall, and Radiant Charizard amongst others. Stoutland V is included for its Double Dip Fangs attack, which allows you to take an extra prize card when it's used to knock out a basic Pokemon. This card would likely not be played if it was not for powerful colorless energy, and due to Archeops you could slap four powerfuls onto Stoutland and get Double Dip Fangs up to 120 damage. Likewise, Amazing Rare Evil Tall is not a very good card outside of specifically this deck, since you can attach three Aurora Energies and a double turbo to it with your Primal Turbo abilities, and then knock out anything in the game. The combination of Stoutland V to deal with single prize basic Pokemon, and Evil Tall to deal with tanky Rulebox Pokemon, has equipped Lugia V Star decks to have at least an even matchup against just about anything, but often it's favored for Lugia due to the consistency, damage output, speed, energy acceleration, pretty much everything about the deck is broken. I can confidently say we have a tier 0 deck on our hands in the form of Lugia V Star Archeops. It is consistent, powerful, and can feasibly adapt to the metagame to keep its matchups favorable. The game's best players almost unanimously agree that Lugia V-Star is the deck likely to win every event, and is the deck you should play if you want to win. Pokemon does not ban cards very often in standard format. When a deck becomes oppressive, creatures will typically release a card that is designed to keep overpowered cards and archetypes in check. For example, Night March was checked by Karen. Greninja Break was checked by Giratina, and Mew VMAX was checked by Drapion V. Since Lugia V-Star was printed in the final Sword and Shield set, it is unlikely the designers would create a counter to the card in the Scarlet and Violet block. However, 
that won't be necessary regardless. I hope you're enjoying the video. I've recently partnered with Into the AM, a premium apparel website that elevates self-expression and passion. They have an incredible collection of apparel with something for everyone, and if you see something you like, you can use code CELIO10 for 10% off your order, which will support my channel directly. They have some incredible graphic tees that I can't wait to wear. Check them out. Now back to the video. As mentioned earlier, the standard format will rotate out all cards with the regulation mark D on April 14th. On screen now is Ian Robb's recent decklist for Lugia V-Star, which he won Vancouver Regionals with. This is what's left of the deck after the standard format rotation on April 14th. The deck loses Quick Ball, Evolution Incense, Evil Tall, Raikou, Aurora Energy, Powerful Energy, the list goes on. As a result, this archetype receives a massive nerf when rotation occurs and will no longer be an oppressive threat. We could guess that without these cards, Lugia might still be good. Or we could know for sure and look at how it's doing over in Japan. The Scarlet and Violet TCG base set released in Japan on January 20th, and as a result, the Japanese standard format rotated out the D block then as well. The Champions League Aichi event was a massive tournament, with roughly 3,000 participants playing in the fresh post rotation standard format. Lugia V Star is still present in this format's current metagame, but nothing like it is here in the States. Lost Box decks, including Giratina V Star variants, Gardevoir EX, Mew V Max, and Maridon EX decks are all on equal or greater power levels with Lugia V Star now in the Japanese metagame. Lugia V Star placed in the top 8 and top 16 at this event, so we can see what these decks may look like after the TPCI standard format rotates. Without powerful colorless energy and Aurora energy, the Lugia decks have changed a lot, and as a result, this archetype is no longer the oppressive force we know it to be now. Due to the rotation being delayed until April 14th, we witnessed an overpowered version of Lugia V-Star. We were stuck with it for over 5 months of competitive play due to the awkward set release schedule between late 2022 and early 2023, introducing minimal cards between Silver Tempest's release and the point we are at now. It is likely Lugia V-Star will dominate the remaining events prior to the rotation on April 14th, but that is not an issue on TPCI's radar since the problem is fleeting and will be resolved shortly. This is why Lugia V-Star is a tier 0 deck, and also why the card has not been and will not be banned from tournament play. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon TCG content. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.